Hold on, hold on. I've lost my way. Ah, here it is. There. Then everyone can see me. <laughs> not that I'm not very obvious already, but yes. Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining Friday morning. So I hope you're still with me and it's going okay um, with the exercises. Had a short conversation just now that some people are finding it a bit difficult. It can be a bit difficult to do the second exercise because it's about creating that awareness um, about on things that we're not usually very aware about. So um, it might help to kind of think about it at different time points during the day. So not just at the end of the day, but maybe during lunchtime that you also think, oh, what, uh, what happened this morning? And do I already have the impression that it that I'm a bit depleting at the moment? But don't worry about it. Um, and it's just a way to practice. It, the answer doesn't have to be very, uh, very impressive or anything. And if you can come up with anything, it's also fine to just send me that because that's also a good thing to be aware of uh, for yourself. Okay, so the last day of the taster sessions. And um, just as a reminder again, <laughs> you guys are gonna get uh, plenty of reminders, but on Monday, uh, I'm giving the masterclass about the natural productivity circle. And I'm also going to share a bit about my story and um, about a beta course that I'm working on. So this is a bigger course um, that really goes deep into the natural productivity circle. And it's a step-by-step -step how you can incorporate that into your own life for people who uh, wanna go uh, into detail about that. Yes, so let's get started. Today we're talking about environment the role that environment plays and why it may be more important than motivation than we think. And at the end, we're gonna to bring together the exercises of the three days. And you'll, you'll see why I asked you to do uh, some, the exercises in that way. So just to start off, um, let's do a quick show of hands if you would uh, type your answer in the chat box. Which of these two images, these two situations, do you think that you might feel more comfortable in? And I know that they look very similar um, and it's not like I did that on purpose, but there's no right or wrong answer. Just uh, go with your gut and um, kind of take a guess in this case. Okay, I see a lot of bees coming in, B, 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 yes. <laughs> Another B, only Bs, yeah, okay. That's very interesting. All right, I have another one for you. How about this one? I have a B, more Bs. Answers coming in a bit slower, that's also. Very interesting. All bees, that also very interesting. Okay. So some of you might have been a bit on the fence, not quite sure. And sometimes it's very, very clear, like, okay, no, not that one, yes, that one. And this is also kind of a tiny exercise in that awareness that we were talking about because um, instinctively, we know that our environment influences. And uh, you may not be able to explain immediately why that's the case, uh, but we, we kind of, we feel it. We either know it instinctively, we feel it, and ultimately it also influences our actions. But when it comes to achieving our goals, most of the time we put all our eggs in the motivation basket. Now, motivation is very, very powerful. So it's not strange that we, that we do that, you know? Especially when you start a new project, um, you are fired up to go. You're very connected with what drives you to do the thing. And um, yeah, you, 
you have this initial boost. So we kind of get the idea that motivation is the only thing that can push us uh, through a project or push us to do things. But the tricky thing with this is we cannot sustain motivation over a long period of time. And the reason for this is again, energy. So motivation is one of the, what I call um, willpower driven resources. So willpower takes a lot of conscious choice and that takes a lot of energy from us. Now motivation is essential because it helps us to do those hard things, you know, to get started or to take on this project that you're not quite sure what is going to look at, look at at the other end. And it's so powerful because it gives us that deeper connection with the things that are important to you. And that's a little bit what we were talking about yesterday with energy boundaries that you build them around the things that are important to you. That's where your motivation and your deeper connection lives. But like I said, motivation isn't something that we can do over a long period of time because it takes so much energy. So you will almost always have this dip over time. I compare it with like shifting to high gear in a car because it gives you that boost and you will start going really, really fast, but it doesn't, uh, you can't do it for a long time because the wear and the tear of, of the car is also much faster. So eventually it will dip. And when you rely on uh, motivation purely for your, uh, your output, the things that you do, your output will dip accordingly. Now, the other side of the equation is environment. And while motivation has mostly to do with what drives us, your environment has to do with uh, has more to do with the circumstances. So what do you have to work with? I wanna take a moment here for you to consider these two sentences. I'm not gonna ask you to share with me, but uh, just take a second to take them in. I am at the mercy of my circumstances, or I can influence my circumstances. Now, I know I may be touching a chord here, and I'm fully aware that we cannot influence and control all our circumstances. But some of us really have more to work with than others. But I think it's important that you ask yourself where you kind of come down here. Because if you feel that you are completely at the mercy of your circumstances, you will have to rely on motivation entirely to get the things done. And as we just saw, motivation is not something that, you, uh, that drives you over a long period of time. The other side is environment. And this is where we can actually find the strength in both sides of the equation. So usually we, everything that we come across during the day, most of that we process that on a subconscious level. This takes much less energy. And if I would compare motivation and environment like black and white, I would say that motivation is the thing that helps us to do hard things and environment is the thing that helps us to do easy things. When you can combine these two to work together, um, you can sustain an output that's much higher over a longer period of time because environment is much more stable. It's not as stable as this, I'll be the first to admit that, but compared to uh, motivation, you, you can design your environment in a way that it doesn't, it's not very volatile and your output can then be sustained over longer periods of time. Now, the thing that brings these two together, I cannot find a place to put my face. So the thing that brings these two things together is your habits and routines. Your habits are what connect the things that are important to you with the things that you actually do on a daily basis. I can tell you a lot about how to use habits and routines uh, for this, but there's only 
a short period of time for these tasters. So I'm not gonna go into detail here. The one thing that I will say is that your habits and routines are the easiest thing to kind of mold uh, around your natural way of working. And when you can choose them, um, if you choose them carefully to support the way that you naturally work, you can do some things on autopilot, like the easy things, and that frees up mental space to do that deep work, to do those uh, tough calculations, and to, those, to, those, to do those hard things that motivation is really good at pushing us through. Okay, let's bring it together. So the last uh, two days, I asked you to do two different exercises. We looked at things that take energy away from us and things that give us energy. I call them your triggers and your go-tos. And your go-tos are going to be the things in your toolkit. Your toolkit is your personal um, design. And those are the things that you can uh, call on when you need to recharge. And as you practice with this, you'll be able to um, pick the right go-to for uh, a situation and you can actually start rejuvenating yourself also in stressful situations. Now we're going to take the step to bring it into your life. So the exercise for today is to create a recharge script to energize yourself after a trigger. So a recharge script might look something like this. After I have a long meeting, I will have a coffee by the window. Yeah, yeah. A recharge, so a recharge script, it connects your trigger with your go-to and it phrases it like a routine. So it makes it a specific moment. In this case, it's just sequential. After this, this happens. Look for things that are easy to do and that give you peace of mind. Easy to do because we don't want to rely on, on uh, willpower here at all. We want this to be so easy that we can do it on autopilot. This is why I asked you to look for things that you naturally gravitate towards already in the exercise of day one. And this is also why I asked you to look for things that fit in a shorter time frame, up to half an hour. Because if you need to clear the rest of your day, to do uh, the thing that makes it harder to do. So we're trying to lower that barrier to do this thing so it can slot into our day whenever we need it. And peace of mind, that's a way to kind of check with yourself if it's the right fit. So if the thought of doing it, so if, if you say your, your recharge script out loud or in your head, and that already gives you stress, that might be a sign that it's not the right uh, go-to for that trigger or maybe not the right go-to at all. For example, if I had chosen, after I have a long meeting, I will play a video game for half an hour. Personally, I would be like, oh, then I have to, like I will be gone for half an hour, but I would like to make some notes and people will be asking me questions and I'll get emails. And I'll be sitting there playing the game, thinking about all the things that I'm gonna have to do later. And that gives me stress. So for me, this would not be a good combination. So don't be afraid to play around with this. Um, there are no right or wrong answers. It's just a way to practice and to start exploring where you might put those energy boundaries, what we talked about yesterday. And as you practice with it, you might also discover that, um, well, maybe you'll add more things to your toolkit, or you might discover that you, you find one that is very effective with a lot of um, triggers. And you might keep some for like special occasions, like for really, really stressful situations. Or you might uh, find that you really need different options um, that you can switch them up and alternate. So this is, this is why it's very personal to you and you can design it the way that you want.
The point is that we actually have much more influence over our daily experience through our habits, routines, and our environment than we think we do. And that relying only on motivation to achieve our goals is actually putting us at a disadvantage, especially because we're, for introverts where energy is such a big theme and motivation and willpower driven resources like that also take a lot of energy to sustain them. So for this exercise, just choose one from your list of triggers and go-tos and formulate this simple uh, script. And then you can try it whenever you have a chance. Um, you don't even have to wait for the trigger to happen, but you can pretend that, imagine that you had that trigger and then go for your, do your go-to and see what that does for you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and if you have any questions, hang back. And if you have to go, please do. And then I wish you a very, very uh, good weekend and a nice day. I hope to see you again. If you have any questions or follow-ups that you would like to talk to me about, um, feel free to also just send me an email or talk to me in the Facebook group or uh, what, through whatever medium you feel comfortable. Um, and yes, I hope this was useful and that it is something that you can try out in the next couple of days.